This week marks an historic moment in Vermont. This coming Friday, July 1st, Vermont's Act 120, the first in the nation labeling law for genetically engineered so-called GE foods will take effect. But unfortunately for consumers everywhere, it could be a short-lived celebration. Late last week, a so-called deal was reached on a national mandatory labeling law. During the weekend, I had the chance to review this proposal closely. Vermonters have reviewed it closely. I could say this, it falls short. This is an extremely complex issue. From how we define genetically engineered foods, to how we treat animal products, from the impact on the organics industry, to how small businesses respond. It's actually not something you just talk about, but the details matter. That's why the Vermont legislature, Republicans and Democrats together, spent two years debating it. They had 50 committee hearings featuring testimony from more than 130 representatives on all sides of the issue. The United States Senate has not held a single hearing on labeling. They've had only one hearing on the issue of biotechnology. They've had none on the issue of labeling food or seeds. Now, I would note that the proposal unveiled late last week that we were able to review this weekend is an improvement over the legislation that the Senate wisely rejected in March. That, um, that bill, the one we rejected, would continue the current status quo. It proposed a meaningless volunteer-only approach had a thinly veiled attempt to block Vermont's labeling law and keep it any other state from acting. The current proposal at least acknowledges states like Vermont have acted in this area. That's why I stayed here on the floor and blocked that first uh, bill, and I thank those senators who joined with me. Now, we heard from the organic industry who expressed reservations how they might be treated under a federal GE labeling program. Some of those concerns have been addressed. The proposal reinforces that the USDA organic seal remains the gold standard. The proposal follows what Vermont's Act 120 does with respect to animal products and addresses the gap in Vermont law for processed food inspected by USDA. Now, reinforcing, of course, USDA organic seal, it's gold standard. I, I watched that carefully as the author of the bill accept the original organic standards. But the proposal also acknowledges the one now before us at long last, what I've been saying for the past year, in many rural parts of this country, including most of Vermont, we have significant techni technological challenges that make it nearly impossible for consumers to access the electronic or digital disclosure methods allowed in this bill. I do hope, however, that the proponents of this proposal will not try to put the burden on our retail establishments to install costly digital scanners. Proponents of this deal were sent back to the drawing board after we derailed them on March 16. So I said I was very proud to be the Vermonter leading that effort. Now, while this proposal makes some positive, though modest, improvements, I remain deeply concerned that it's not going to offer transparency for consumers. Transparency is that many companies have already opted to provide. Look at these products. I bet most Americans can go to their cupboards and find them. Campbell's and General Mills, Frito-Lay, Cheez-Its, and the kind of Wonder Bread. All of them, all of them are already putting on their labels that they're partially produced with genetic engineering. It's easy. Just print it on. Print it on there. In the same way that, um, let me put this first one. 
back up there, this, um, it's in the same way that if you have a child or a grandchild with a peanut allergy or requires gluten-free, you can go and look for a label so you know what you're feeding them. Now, thanks to the citizen-led efforts in Vermont, we're seeing more and more consumer-friendly information easily accessible to shoppers. No scanning some code, no calling an 800 number. You don't pick up a, a product and say, gee, I've got to scan a code in here, or I've got to call an 800 number. No, you just pick up the product, look down, you find out what it's got in there, everything from water and celery and corn and cotton seed and genetic engineering. We've seen countless pictures sent by shoppers find these labels. Labeling, labeling is neither complicated nor cost prohibitive in package. They're constantly printing new labels, you just add a line. And of course, to make matters worse, the bill we had before us has absolutely no enforcement mechanism. The negotiators of this proposal seem to think public pressure will be enough to force these multi-million dollar corporations to comply. What they are saying, you know, what they are saying is, you guys, you guys be the cop on the beat. Uh, you be the ones, tell them what to do. Well, it makes a difference to us. Uh, public pressure is not enough. You can't ask consumers to go around and try to figure out every candidate by an imprint pressure. That's what you have legislatures for. So the deal does not go far enough to give consumers what they're asking for, a simple unpackaged label or symbol. And of course, this bill does more than just block states from enacting GE food labeling laws like Vermont's Act 120. It also blocks a long-standing seed labeling law in Vermont one that Vermont's organic farmers appreciate, as do conventional farmers and even backyard hobby gardeners, people from all over the country, right in and buy these seeds because they know, uh, they know the labeling law. It's a law that's been on the books since 2004. Ensures clear, meaningful information for farmers to know exactly what they're buying, and that's why they buy it. Now, perhaps in a state like Kansas, where the last organic farm survey in 2014 counted only 83 organic farms, or in Michigan, a state which is 10 times the size of Vermont, they said they have 332 organic farms. Maybe in those states that don't have organic farms, having access to that seed information is not considered useful or important. But in a state like Vermont, with only 600,000 people, but where our Organic Farming Association assures me we now have over 600 organic farms, our seed labeling law is important. The industry has complied with it for the last 12 years. Yet with no hearings, no debate, this deal would block Vermont's seed law and would prevent any other state from enacting one. Now, as I said, I was proud when I was chairman of the Senate Agriculture Committee. I wrote the law that set the National Organic Standards and Labeling Program. I was proud of that. It started out following a discussion across the kitchen table with organic farmers in Vermont. It is now a nearly $40 billion industry nationwide. So I continue to closely monitor and work to protect the high standards for the organic program. They've given consumers confidence in the organic label. They've given organic producers the strong, clear, and meaningful standards that they have demanded. They work hard to follow these standards. But they want to know what the standards are so that those who work hard and follow the rules are not going to have somebody come in and just say, well, we, we followed the rules, but no proof that they did. Labeling of genetically engineered products 
is an outgrowth of the organic movement. And as a watchdog of that program, I simply cannot support this proposal. I don't support it. We're not saying you can't have uh, these genetically engineered foods. It's just let consumers know. They can decide whether to buy it or not. Just as a parent with a child that may require a gluten-free uh, diet knows when they come in whether a product is gluten-free or not. It doesn't say you outlaw products with gluten in it, but it says give people the choice, the same for those who have a peanut allergy. Now, Vermonters have a long tradition of leading the national debate on issues crossing the spectrum. Vermonters stand for transparency and a consumer's right to know. Vermonters want to make informed decisions for their families and with their limited grocery budget. Now, I acknowledge, we Vermonters acknowledge, powerful interests are allied against Vermont's law and against the nation's consumers. That's been a fact from the beginning. The proposal released last week does not respect the work that Vermont has painstakingly done the spa space. This Vermonter reflects the feelings of my constituents. I will not, I cannot support it. Vermonters deserve better. So do all Americans. Mr. President, I ask consent that my full statement be placed in the record. Without objection. Mr. President, I see my good friend from Oregon, Senator Merkley, on the floor. He knows how important Vermont's work has been in this national public debate. I've been proud to co-sponsor his legislation that recognizes and respects Vermont's law, and I yield to my good friend from Oregon. 